Are you still the Comcast Sportsnet Mid Atlantic host, Michael? Still gainfully employed, Dan. Believe it. Believe it or not. All right. When did you come up with this? Well, the funny thing is, is that we actually came up with this kind of on the fly. And, you know, I had a normal sports cast plan. And we do a lot of fun stuff. We do a lot of bits and commentaries and stuff like that, stuff that we actually thought would would do better than this would do. And so just about half an hour before the show, we'd already had three or four hours of Capitals coverage. And I thought, you know what? Everyone's seen the same highlights. They've seen the same reaction. Let's have some fun with it and sort of project the disappointment that everyone feels right now. So I went, I was like, I'm going to pretend I'm drinking on air. I'm just going to pretend I'm drinking on air and I'm going to do it the entire show. And so I went and I found the one glass that you could see through in the entire station. I filled it up and went on air and just kind of went with it. And <laughs> I mean, it, it stunned us just how much it just took off and we kind of went with it from there. What was in the glass? Oh, man, iced tea on oh, an okay. actual booze. Okay. Right. Did anybody try to talk you out of it? No. I mean, you know, in our, <laughs> I mean, our little world, <laughs> that's the funny thing is, is that here we, we actually do stuff not maybe that extreme. We do little things like this all the time. So for us, it wasn't that big of a deal. We all thought it was funny. We thought, oh, yeah, this will be great. Uh, it'll be hilarious. We'll have some fun with it. And that was the end of it for us. But, of course, on a national scale, people aren't familiar with this. So – it was like, oh, my God, what are these guys doing? How could they think of such a thing? How could this guy actually chug bourbon, a live TV, unbelievable? And we actually just didn't think it was that big of a deal at the time. The thing I got in trouble most well, – <laughs> management trusted me here. The thing that they were really upset about is that I ruined an $800 microphone because I spilled some of my drink on it. So that was the actual <laughs> issue. Oh, I thought you were going to have some backlash on talking to kids about their dreams. Now, amazingly, everyone just kind of related to that and said, "Yeah, that's uh, yeah, he's spot on there." Did management say anything? Or are they they're they, they're aware of this? Yes, yeah, they were. Uh, I didn't really say anything because there was nothing. I mean, I feel bad because I, there were so many people that wanted to believe that I was drinking on air. So either way, it was like, look, you can either play into that or you can, you know, lose your job. So. Uh, no, management was, uh, they were fine with it. They know sort of my style and that I always try to make sports as fun as it can be. And so it just, it really wasn't an issue. The issue really was the microphone more than anything else. But no, they were completely supportive and um, really happy with it. And the Capitals really make you drink though, Michael? Oh, Dan, yes. I mean, this, this team is, you know, D.C. sports in general. I mean, we haven't, <laughs> as, I mean, most people know we haven't won a title. I mean, I've been here for 11 years. I've never covered a championship team in one of the four major sports. And the people that have been here longer than I have. And so, I mean, I live right in the city. I feel like I'm a part of this city, and I, I really want our, our local teams to do well. Um, but the people who have been here longer than me have experienced a drought even longer. And the Capitals in particular are the one team we thought, all right, this is the year, especially after all these years where there was disappointment, disappointment. And this was the year we thought, now this is, this is the year we actually break through. And so for that to actually uh, – to actually once again end up with this crushing disappointment. I think that's why people related to it, because if you're a Caps fan at all or a hockey fan, you've been there where it's like, you know what, I'm just going to have some drinks because this sucks all over again. If you were going to apply for another job, would you put what happened with the drinking on that resume reel? That's a great question. I mean, I would say probably not, because there's just not the context there. In the context of, you know, the three people that are familiar with my career, then, and I've done this for 20 years, so it's, it's, it's one thing in a host of things I've done. But for, you know, 99.9% of the people out there, people looking at me for a potential job, it would be like, oh, yeah, that's the drunk guy out there. So, yeah, I would probably uh, not put that on a resume and, and hope that that sort of just fades into the distance. Oberman and I talked about having sort of a, a blue channel where you were able to say what you really felt during the highlights. So if you didn't like somebody, language wasn't going to be an issue. You know, maybe you just take the baton and, you know, maybe late night have some beverages, Michael, and just just go blue and say whatever you want about a player, a team, get a big sponsor in there. I like the idea of going blue. Think about an after midnight show where literally you're on cable and you've got a drink in each hand, you got a co-host, and you guys, you just do random commentaries and just go off as much as you want. I, the thing is, is that there's probably going to be a group or some guy that does that and makes a killing off of it. You could be that guy, Michael. Well, 
you know. Do you want to work late at night? Because you were in the morning. I will, and that, you know, that's funny is that that was another thing is that normally I have a show Monday through Friday at 1030, right? So it's, uh, it's very similar to, uh, SVP, except it's on our, on a regional level. But so I'm, I'm not usually on at one fifteen in the morning. So that was another fact <laughs> that said to us, like, you know what, who's watching this right now? It's late. We're all tired. Let's just do this. Um, so we always, uh, in fact, normally if we have a show that that's late, we'll turn down the lights a little bit in the studio and have some fun with it. It's actually not the first time I've pretended to pull out a drink on set since it's so late. I think you do a nude sports cast where like, <laughs> but, but cause people thought we didn't wear pants when we did sports center. So what if you just had shirt, tie, sport coat and no pants on? And just, well, the thing is, is that I have a really weird, like, misshapen body, and I feel like <laughs> that people, that, like, the common man could relate to that. It's like, you know, that's that's my guy right there. You know, he's showing up, but he has nothing to show up. So, you know, there, there may be a little niche there for me to fill. Uh, well, you're you're now the uh, the sports casting Ron Burgundy. <laughs> you know what? Uh, Ron's one of my uh, my idols. Of course, so I'll, he I'll is. Take that. <laughs> scotch, 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 scotch. Uh, <laughs> Mike, congratulations. Good to talk to you, and uh, and good luck. Hey, Dan, it's a pleasure. I really appreciate it. Thank you very much. That's Michael Jenkins, Comcast Sportsnet, Mid-Atlantic host. Still has a job. The Dan Patrick Show, weekday mornings on Audience.